For the times when uniform slicer settings may not produce optimal results, Kirimoto now has ranges, and I'm going to show you how to use them. First, make sure you're on version 2.7 or newer, and if not, go to the profile menu and select version. A good platonic solid makes for an easier demonstration, so we're going to pick some sensible defaults and just slice our object. We can take a look at what we've got inside as sort of a baseline for what we're working with. However, I find for looking at ranges that one of the easiest things to do is to switch over to the flat view. When you look at objects this way, they're slightly transparent. You can see what's going on inside, and that's going to help us easier understand how ranges work. One of the things that uh, is common is you're going to want to add, say, a solid layer in the middle of a part or um, a number of layers. And in the past, it's sort of hard to do. So what you do is you, let's go in here and click the infill and say, we're going to make this region solid at one. So you'll see it says update ranges. The range menu appears here. And inside of that, we see that we have a range from 68 to 73 where fraction, fill fraction has been changed to one. So what represented, what's represented in the ranges are deltas to whatever your defaults are. Click on that. We can see the part hasn't changed. If we re-slice, there's our solid layer inside. So in the future, the progressive or sort of incremental slicing will happen when you make a value change. It'll re-render it immediately. As of right now, you just have to hit slice again, and there it is. The next thing you want to do is make a change uh, to another region and see what happens. So we can click on this range, it will highlight the range, and we can then sort of zoom up and down around it. Let's select a range that spans this range here and say, let's make a change to a different parameter. And in this case, I'm going to change the number of shells or parameters to, let's say, something large like five, which we can see, and take a look at what happens to our ranges. We now have three ranges. Uh, it's been split into a range above, the range in the middle, and below. And that's because ranges are determined by the deltas. So let's re-slice it. And here we can see the three different distinct ranges that have been created. Again, this is done as deltas to whatever your defaults are here. And you can go in and delete a range and then re-slice, and that will return to normal. So the way this works is that arranges are um, stored as a set of deltas to whatever your defaults are. And it's pretty simple from there. If there are any other changes that you want to make, such as turning off infill in a certain area, go ahead and do that. Re-slice it, and you'll see that doesn't have infill. And you get the picture. Uh, for the purposes of this test, the only things that are available to modify are currently the shell count, and an infill, the infill type, and the fraction. And that's just because this was coded up today and I wanted to get it out as soon as possible and get some reactions and feedback to it. Uh, in theory, any parameter can be done this way. To keep in mind, this is only editable inside of the slice mode. So if you make changes here, you can't edit ranges. You have to slice the part, then select a range, change the parameter that you want for that particular range, and re-slice. And then you'll see your changes for that region then you can go in and select any given region and modify that or arrange around it. I hope you found this interesting and useful. Um, I'm looking forward to your feedback on this new feature in the comments below. Uh, see you on the forums and in the Discord channel. Thanks for watching.